we do not necessarily need to have the same amount of reactants and products. What is the amount will depend on the equilibrium constant that would control the ratio. So not necessarily equal. Concentration will remain constant. Yep, they will follow the ratio given by the KC as mentioned. And why do they remain constant? Well, the rate at which the reactants are becoming products is the same as the rate at which the products are changing into reactants. That's why there's no overall change in the concentrations. Thirty-four. If N2O4 gas is placed and we have this equilibrium, what happens when temperature is increased? They give us that the forward reaction is, is endothermic. So when temperature is increased, the equilibrium will shift to the right side. What happens when you shift to the right side? Your amount of your, of your NO2 will be going up your N2O4 ratio will be going down. Don't forget, temperature will change equilibrium constant. Right? And if shift to the right, NO2 will going up, N2O4 will go down. What does that make your KC? You have a larger number on top divided by an even smaller number. Your KC overall should be increasing. The partial pressure of NO2 increases. We have more NO2 the partial pressure of NO2 will be increasing, more gases. Activation energy is affected by your presence of catalyst, not by temperature, so it will not be changed. Thirty-five, what kind of bonding do we have for ammonium carbonate? NH4 plus CO3 2 minus we will have ionic bonds, positive ions and negative ion. The covalent bonds are located within the molecules themselves. There is sharing of electrons, nitrogen and hydrogen. There is also covalent bond between carbon and oxygen in the carbonates. Coordinate bond. Okay, understand that we have nitrogen if you just look at NO3, NH3 ammonia and how does it form a bond with to form ammonium they have to form a dative bond with a H plus so there is a dative bond between nitrogen and one of the H so all three types of bonds are present sulfur dioxide sulfur is used for preservation why do they how do they work well they are reducing agents so they can remove things like oxygen and all that and pre prevent the food from being oxidized and the bacteria that requires oxygen to function due to the lack of oxygen and all that as the oxygen is reduced reacting with sulfur dioxide we will not get the bacteria acting on the food right. sulfur dioxide do react with NO2 but that's not relevant in the concept of food preservations. We don't really have NO2 present. Thirty seven warming your halogen alkanes with silver nitrate and then the precipitate dissolved when concentrated ammonia is used. All your halogens when they do come out, they will get, we will get a precipitate of AGBR, AGCL, AGI. So we will form precipitates and then if we add concentrated aqueous ammonia, concentrated aqueous ammonia will dissolve bromine or silver bromide and silver chloride, not for silver iodide. If it was aqueous ammonia, dilute, then only silver chloride will be dissolved. Concentrated, both silver chloride and silver bromide. We have this organic compound, 
C6H14O. What kind of compound could it be? One way to check is we can look at the CNH2N idea. C6 If n is 6, 2 times 6 plus 2 will get 14. So it's a clue that it's all single bonds. So how can this O be attached? Within our syllabus, that means the O is attached to another H as a hydroxyl group. So this is an alcohol that can be oxidized. And when it's oxidized, we get an extra oxygen. So it's giving us a clue that it becomes a COOH group, which is an acid. So if you piece together the info, the types of alcohol that can become an acid, we are looking for primary alcohol. And then if you look at the three structures here, two is more obvious. It's the alcohol is at the tail end. This is a primary alcohol. So it's three, it's a primary alcohol. For one, if it's not clear, you can draw the structure. There's a branch coming out, CH2OH, okay, which is here. This also shows that it's a primary alcohol. So all three are primary alcohols. They will undergo oxidation and they will form our COOH acid. Which reactions can be used to make an alcohol in a lab? Hydrolysis of bromoalkane. Okay, let's say we have alkane. And you use sodium hydroxide. It will undergo nucleophilic substitution. And then your Br will become OH. We can get an alcohol from here. Ketone, we can reduce it with sodium boron hydride. It will go back to our secondary alcohol this is a reducing agent same thing reducing agent sodium boron hydride will reduce aldehyde back to primary alcohol so all three are possible Forty. Three compounds treated with hydrogen cyanide which one will give us a molecule with chiral center filter now your aldehyde. When we react it with HCN, there will be a step up reaction because it's a carbonyl. The H will be here, the CN will go to the other side, and then we have a chiral carbon here. Pentatrione, pentanone. The double bond O is here, the ketone group. Same thing, carbon now, H will come here, CN will be here. But this is not chiral because we have two groups that are the same. Chlorobutane will not react with hydrogen cyanide, it's a halogen alkane, so that's out. Anyway, two is out, so three cannot be correct. So only one of them will give us a chiral carbon. 